All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Slash EG Heroes Open Group 2 match tonight. I am Cat Peach. I will be your host for this evening with this match against Team Training Wheels and Roll 1 Esports. We're getting to the end of the first stage of the inaugural, inaugural Heroes Open season. Uh, so, yeah, this actually has interesting implications for Team Training Wheels. They're really trying to come in and get that domination victory here tonight. Uh, but before we get into the map, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the map picks here. Getting banned out tonight, Team Training Wheels taking Dragonshire off the map. Roll 1 Esports saying they don't want to go to Towers of Doom. And so for game number one, we're going to be heading over to Infernal Shrines as picked by Team Training Wheels. We're just making sure that everyone is getting ready. There's some actually good love here going on in the lobby, and you'll love to see it. And I'm just telling them all that. Just talking about how they all met BlizzCon is really adorable, and I loved it. Uh, but let's kick things off, boys and girls, as soon as the lobby wants to get in there. And here we go, Infernal Shrines. As I was saying, we're getting toward the end of the first group here of the first slash GG open. And Team Training Wheels, if they are able to uh, cinch that domination victory here tonight will be able to raise a bit in the standings temporarily getting up to that second place spot. There's a couple other matches that do have to be played out tonight and tomorrow to kind of firm up what the standings are for uh, the entire season. But it can throw a little bit of a loophole in if they get that domination. If they don't, if this is a tie, then not as big of a deal. Looking at these bands, we're taking out two pretty prominent takes, that Johanna and Diablo, and Orphea still being a pretty popular ban amongst the ranks of the competitive amateur Every leagues here. To Hakam, that global Hakam. pressure Redemption. being taken off the field by Team Training Wheels, and Hanzo as the first pickup. With those scattered arrows, can do a lot of damage to the skeletal defenders in that shrine objective, that altar. If Hanzo opts to go into the talents that do additional damage onto minions and mercs and the things like that. The follow-up, though, that I really like is Tarana and Jaina. A good Tyrande, always defined by how consistent you are with those lunar flares. Team Training Wheels have the follow-up damage with that Jaina Blizzard if they are able to land those and have the clear on these shrines as well. So a really good first two pickups coming out from them. But on the other side, Malfurion coming out, those dudes being able to mess up a bit of team fights of that objective as well, if those roots do land. And the Kael'thas as well. So in maps with objectives, very much like Infernal Shrines where everyone is so grouped, Kael'thas can see a lot of value. So depending on how Roll 1 Esports are feeling tonight, if they can get that living bomb chain value and really spread out that damage, these fights can very much go their way. Turn the volume up just a little smidge of doodle. Let me know if that's all right, fam. The Garrosh is an interesting band. So we're seeing a bit of a warrior choke now for both. Both these teams. I'm a little bit surprised by the ETC, but the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix Mosh Pit combination is extraordinarily strong. So we don't really have much in terms of meta warriors left. We do have the Muradin, which is going to be picked up by Team Training Wheels first. Also following up with the Maya, which is going to be a very spicy pick. But if you're Roll 1 Esports, what do you have? You still have that Arthas available. You have that root value that can also be followed up with the Malfurion roots. So potentially seeing something like that. Uh, and after that, you have a couple interesting picks. You try to run uh, something like a Leork as a main take. They are going to pick up the Arthas, and they're also going to pick up the Anubarak. So two pretty beefy frontliners coming in. Anubarak in a really excellent spot overall. Right now in the game, I would say he tends to be banned out a ton more than uh, I'm used to seeing. 
typically, I have not written down any of this draft, by the way. Let's just revel at it for the time being as I rearrange things around my desk so I have a room to actually observe here. But, uh, yeah. Blaze being the last pick here for Team Training Whales. Being able to get that stun. I mean, what we're looking at on the side of Team Training Wheels is a lot of stun CC lockdown. You have Meriden with that Storm Bolt that can give you that initial stun. You have Lunar Flare, obviously, uh, that we were talking about earlier. You have the Blaze uh, Jet Propulsion as well that can stun out a group of targets. And so the Blaze Jaina combination there, uh, especially during these objective phases, is really strong and i imagine that in team fights if they're going to go quickly they're going to very much go in favor of team training wheels but that isn't to discount necessarily the team on the side of roll one esports but it's time for the game let's get into this ladies and gentlemen in the blue we do have team training wheels we're going to see giggle schmeck on that Maya. Taco Cat will be playing the Toronto. Toronto, sorry. Ryukin is going to be on the Blaze. Reaper on the Muradin. And Confused will be playing that Jaina. And over in the red, we do have Roll One Esports. We're going to see Velvet playing that Hanzo. Zad on the Kael'thas. Uh, Huanaba on the Malfurion. Big Beard on that Arthas. And Rock the W is going to be on the Anubarak here. Full team sending everyone mid right to the gate, seeing what potential little bit of damage, a little bit of scuffling you can get in. These first couple of minutes very much just kind of poising, see if anyone is a little bit too eager, too willing to step out uh, a bit too soon. And we already see some of that living bond damage going onto Jaina. Now the rotations for that Jaina are going to be massive as we do have the fingers of Frost Talent coming out at level 1 to expect to see her being escorted with the rest of her team to collect on those globes and get that additional mana savings as soon as possible. With the match rotation coming out from row one, not to be ignored, Anubarak gets found in the bush. There's the Lunar Flare. Reaper already using the Dwarf Toss just to get the rotation a little bit faster. Bizad catches that as well. Giggleschmack able to get the tether. Bizad not falling for it, going to make sure they stay within range, not to get pulled back and stunned for a bit from there. Where? Ooh, I guess we're gonna see the world upside down. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. I hit the wrong thing. We're gonna see the game now. I hit map because I thought it was the map. Hello, welcome. Apologies. Thank you, chat. It's not a cat peach stream unless I do something silly. My apologies, but welcome to the match. We have no kills just yet. I was just about to talk about this here offlane Arthas, however, going into Ryukin. But hold on, down in the bottom, we actually get down here just in time to see the first kill onto Meriden and the follow up kill onto Maev from Team Training Wheels trying to get. Uh, an invade on this siege camp on the side of roll one esports side of the map now the vision out roll one trying to instead do the chain uh, do the same to their opponents however this time around going to have the man advantage just for a little while should be able to finish up just in time cap just in time for the shrine to spawn level four sitting here for both teams that camp should be cleared up, but this other camp pushing in mid, getting a little bit of value. And roll one right now, really focused on building up as much macro pressure as possible right before this shrine starts. So there's going to have to be a little bit of a response from team training wheels if they don't want these camps to push into structures too soon. If left alone, though, can set up roll one pretty nicely if they are able to get this first punisher. The rotation up, Giggle Schmack being the first to tap on here. Now, the clear on the side of Team Training Wheels, as long as the very quick burst fight, I think puts them at a little bit of an advantage if they want to be super aggressive. But they have to change 
those uh, CCs right that we talked about earlier. Reaper, though, taking a lot of damage, going to use the Dwarf Toss to get out, waiting for their trait to crop so they can heal up just a little bit. But for the time being, roll 20, or sorry, roll 1, getting the advantage right now. But a lot of damage going on to that Kael'thas on the back line. We see the value of that Blizzard. Roll 1 going to be pushed back, sitting at 22, 23. The Skeletal Defenders will have to see how many they want to go in and try to capitalize, all while that bottom camp that they were able to grab before this objective was procced, going in, getting some value on the bottom. Big Beard looking in, trying to see if they can do some damage to Reaper. There's the unstoppable, or there's the burrow from Rock Your Roll, but they're taking a lot of damage, kind of going in alone without a lot of follow-up, able to back away for now. This is a really close objective, 32 to 32. We now have all members of Roll One here joining. Big Beard trying to zone. There is the Gravity Well. Gilchmet using the jump to try to get out of there as well to survive a little bit longer. 39, 39. Who is going to get the last one first? And it is going to be Team Training Wheels. But are they going to live to be able to push it? This Ryukin taking a lot of damage. Blaze going to be falling for this push. The Punisher jumping onto Zed. Not what you what you want to see. Your Kael'thas tanking. A big old Punisher boy. But this Punisher going to get a little bit of value. We see the push not really being the focus here for team training reels. Confused having to go up. Oh, excuse me. A new Barak going to fall there. I'm assuming either taking a bit too much damage from that Punisher or simply uh, some additional damage coming out from Taco Cat and Reaper as well, being able to take them out. Uh, but overall, a little bit of an XP lead on the side of Team Training Reels. But level 7 in here. Training Reels trying to see if they can use their 4-person advantage to successfully grab the Siege Camp this time around. There's the Burrow, though, from Rocker W. They get the stun out as well. Reaper taking a lot of damage. The Body Block is trying to be there, but Reaper using that Dwarf Toss. Are they able to get away, Ryukin, with the... Jet Propulsion to peel for Reaper. Murdering, getting out of here. No problemo, ladies and gentlemen. They don't get the camp. But at least no one dies this time around, unlike before. And we're back to soaking. Both teams should be very close to level 10 by the time the second objective spawns here. So everyone's just gonna try to rotate opposite, I would say, of what their team is doing, unless they can absolutely secure a pick. Roll one, though. Very aggressive Siege Camp Steel coming out. They do have a bit of the clear. We'll have to see if Team Training Wheels, who are right there, get sniffed, and they do not. That camp is going to be lost. One tool in the bag that they're not gonna have so much of. Let's see, down in the bottom, Zad here, also grabbing that Merc. So roll one really focused, like we talked about, on this macro pressure. I would be, or I would like to see them maybe not cap this until right before the objective spawns, but it looks like they're going to grab it right away. Maybe grab that top camp closer to that objective time. Taranda getting the scout, not seeing anyone just yet. Arthur's going to start making the rotation down. And the team now trying to stick together. This four-man unit is really affected for roll one. Rocker W has no problem, as we've seen, going in with those burrows, trying to get those stuns to have the picks ready for Zad to throw that living bond onto, for those roots to be ready for, Malfe for, uh, for Malfurion right afterwards as well. Tyrande does get the scope on these. Both these teams focusing on this counter pressure up in the top lane, so it should cancel out. Level 10 here for, for both teams as well. Big Beard trying to do a little tango here with Muradin, but one simply does not damage Muradin and expect to get too much out of it unless you can stun him out of that Dwarf Toss, which I'm pretty sure you can if it's timed perfectly. I think I've been on the receiving end as the Muradin of people stunning out my toss, and it's a very sad time when that happens. Roll 1 focuses on clearing out Team Training Wheels camp before finally rotating to the objective. But like we talked about before, Team Training Wheels have a lot of tools in their kit to clear this out quickly. They're already sitting at 16. You can getting the visions, being able to 
stop the immediate rotation. There's the dive coming out from Nubarat. Tack Pocat taking a lot of damage. There's the Burrow, though, onto Jaina, preventing the Water Elemental from coming out. But there it is now, and Treebeard taking a lot of that damage. The Silence from Malfurion. Not really sure it catches as many as they want, but regardless, the bunker is there to provide a little bit of defense. Arthas going to fall first here in this fight. The tree is on from roll one. Blaze, though, on the other side, going to fall. Everyone's really low on both these teams, but Reaper is going to be the next. So we are now at a man advantage for roll one esports. They need to catch up on the skeletal defenders, though. Mayev. Jigglesmack getting caught, trying to clear up just a couple more. There's only six left that they need, and if Jaina was able to get that blizzard in just the right place, we see Taco Cat and Confuse trying to get those last four as safely as possible without giving their lives away. Confuse trying to set up to get that blizzard out, but we've now caught up on the side of Row 1 Esports, and they are able to finally get the channel. Rocker W trying to get the body block onto Jaina, but they're able to juke it just a little bit, but they do get the cocoon out on the Taronda, and this should be a very dead support in just a little bit unless she's got something up her sleeve but with that uh with the barb from a new with the follow-up burrow veranda not living to see a little bit of this game for the time being this punisher john tina all over this fort while the rest of roll one get yet another pick onto murden the stun lock we talked about the stun lock on the side of team training wheels earlier however I didn't really talk about on the side of Roll1 Esports just as much. But you have the Gravity Well, obviously, from Kael'thas, and you have two coming out from Anubarak. Jaina going to be falling next. That water, water Elemental, though, trying to throw those snowballs out as best they can. Slowing Anubarak just a little bit from the retreat. Roll1 now looking back up, clearing up this last turret. This Punisher is pretty much a goner at this point. Are this already with the retreat trying to make sure they're not missing any soak here in this mid lane rocker w has had some really excellent engages and there was one a bit earlier over during the first objective that went a little bit deep and they were able to get out of it but it had me a little bit worried if we would see rocker w uh maybe go in a little bit uh too quickly too fast but the rest of the team has been there to follow up on the damage so the communication is there and they're able to get these picks these stun picks there's a stun onto reaper there's the bro yet again to maybe try to reconnect but it's not there toronto yet again the victim of the cocoon reaper trying their best to help get her out taco cat puts down or is finally released there water welly oh what a great silence coming out from wannabe is on this fort should be falling momentarily pretty excellent structural advantage right now coming out from roll one esports who when we were talking about this match in discord before it was happening they were mentioning you know not really sure how much our last place standings are going to affect things but like we talked about before the games kicked off team training wheels if they wanted to be in that top three potentially uh you know in the standings going into stage two of slash gg they were going to need to win out a domination and as it's standing right now roll one esports really giving them a run for their money so what is standings though you know all i'm saying is don't let the standings get you down roll one esports right now playing as if they're the top seed in group two for the Heroes Open. Freebird tries to get the root onto Ryukin. It's not going to connect. The Jet Propulsion actually goes back into Roll 1 Esports. The bunker there to provide Blaze a little bit of support. But with the Phoenix going down as well, this is going to be a retreat for the time being. Four team training wheels. The Warden's Cage, though, going out, and that is four members getting pulled into that Warden's Cage. Ryukin, though, on the backside taking a lot of damage, but I think Arthas might be the next to fall. But Arthas is managing to stay alive. Rocker W able to help get a couple more kills. They get one pick onto the Blaze. Rocker W getting pulled in, finally going down, but we're able to help secure the death onto Jaina. Hanzo, though, on the other side, also falling, but overall, with the Maya finally falling, a three for two trade in favor of Roll One Esports. Also, this camp, Roll One's macro, again, just has been on point. And when these objectives are spawning, they have 
you know, at least one camp going in. They're about to have a second pushing in the top lane, which is already pretty pushed out. And so if Team Training Wheels leaves that at this point to continue to push in that top lane, you're look, starting to look at pressure on this top keep gate wall. It's nothing threatening just yet, as this Punisher will be going through the mid lane. But this mid lane already kind of pushed out really far. Roll one going right in, trying to get as much of as a lead on these as possible. Jaina's up in the top lane and should be showing. She's starting to make the rotation. So roll one needs to act fast before she's able to really join in the fight. Big Beard going in onto Reaper, ends up getting stunned. Taking a lot of damage. The Jack Propulsion is there from Blaze, but Big Beard taking way too much damage. Finally going to fall here. Phoenix going down, trying to zone a bit for Roll One as they try to focus on finishing this objective. They're sitting five away. Rocker W stuck in the Warden's cage, trying to do what they can while they're still alive. But Hanzo going to go down on one side, a Nubarak on another, and with only four skeletal defenders needed, Roll One Esports thwarted in their attempt to get this next objective. However, remember guys, top camp getting value. And remember, this is the camp, the shaman camp, that respawns as they go. Let's see a little Kel'thas on fire. Rip in pieces, Kel'thas with your salami. Now the most John Cena of John Cena's coming out right here, Arcane Punisher. A beautiful, Use of the vault coming out from Giggleschmack, being able to bait that Punisher close, at least, to the gate wall. Not necessarily getting them over, although now it does, but at least able to focus that attention without taking any damage. But if they were able to get that over the gate, that would have been the most value vault of the Wardens I have ever seen. So Kilthas a sacrifice to finish off the objective. Kind of worth. Got some damage onto this mid keep roll one, being able to grab that bottom camp in the meantime and again steal the siege away from their opponents. That will push that newly broken open mid lane. It looks like the call rather than go to the camp is to actually push with it, see if they can get a little bit more value. Confused going up to health giggle giggle schmack. Excuse me, up there with the top. Roll one though. They sniff out a Tyrande. They get the root onto Taco Cat. There is the stun from Hanzo. The dragon arrow being used to get the kill onto the support of Team Training Wheel. So we have another man advantage for Roll One. Roll one for the time being. They're gonna go right for this keep, but first they're gonna see if they can finally get the kill onto this Reaper. And there's that Sunlock we were talking about. No Dwarf Toss available for Muradin to get out. Maev caught in the cocoon. Janna using the Blizzard to help her get out, but the stun follow-up is there. There's the Vault of the Wardens, but she is not able to escape, ladies and gentlemen. Blaze now trying to get out of dodge while Roll One Esports set their eyes onto this core. There's a Blaze going down. And with these camp spawning with all five members and only one Jaina for the time being, this is looking like a GG. GG's are out. Game number one going over. Oh, do we see a retreat? Did I speak too soon? Taco Cat coming in. There's a Lunar Flare. Jaina, though, going down. So we're back to just a Tyrande. And there's the final GG's. Game number one going over to Roll One Esports which I would say is definitely a bit of an upset. Um, Team Training Wheels coming in, currently sitting, I believe, at number four or number five in the standings. Get defeated by their opponent here. And just the kills themselves, I was actually expecting a lot more deaths on the side of Roll One Esports, to be entirely honest, just because of the oppression that Maev can put on, and especially with the potential combination of lockdown that was on the side of Team Training Wheels. But to be honest, I wasn't necessarily seeing it as much as Roll One Esports was able to coordinate. 
I was actually really surprised like that. I don't think we saw too much of any of the Stormbolt Lunar Flare combination to set up for Jaina, which is very, very interesting. There also are a couple times in that in a couple of those fights, especially around the objective and after, that I feel like Ring of Frost would have gotten a little bit more value than I saw the water elemental. Especially because that well, he seemed a lot of times to be focused on that Anubarak, who did fall every once in a while. But uh, not as often as I assumed. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out. My name is Cat Peach. I kind of screwed up the beginning of the cast, but it's okay. You saw him. The important exciting bits of the game. I am just setting up scores in lobbies and things like that for you all in a moment. So actually while I do that we do have map selection for game number two. So again Dragonshire and Towers of Doom being taken off the list here. We just went to Infernal Shrines which roll one was able to win so game number two, heading over to Battlefield of Eternity. I just now need to get all these teams in here. I will let you look at this beautiful infographic. Again, if you're just popping in here, this is the slash GG. Here is open stage one group two matchup between team training wheels and roll one esports. And I am your host, Cat Peach. Hello. It's good to see you all. Happy Monday. This is pretty exciting. As I was saying a couple times so far tonight, um, there's some very interesting potential in the standings for Group 2 specifically, which I've been paying a bit of attention to, uh, a bit more specifically, um, where the top three teams currently depending on how tonight and tomorrow goes, could entirely get switched up. You have currently running with Turtle sitting with 10 points in first place, followed by Blasting Burrows, I believe. Or are they sitting at third? Blasting Burrows in second. Thick Mama Hots, Alex, sitting at third. Tra team Training Wheels in, in fourth. As I was saying, if Team Training Wheels were able to get a domination tonight, they would have temporarily bumped up to the number two standings. Looking like that's not going to be the case just yet. I apologize. Just, just getting things ready. But I see you all in chat. I see you. That was a very good win. Very clean win from Roll20 for sure. I keep saying roll 20. It's roll one. It's roll one. It's the other part of the die. And I keep messing it up. I'm sorry, roll one. You're nice, you're nice individuals, and I'm sorry I keep mixing up your name with <laughs> somebody else. It's just out of habit. It's just out of habit. Can I hydrate here real quick? As we set up this lobby, looks like all teams are in now. Yeah, what a way to kick off the week. And I do believe that the schedules for the bracket phase will be released this week after all the round or the final round has been completed and scores are tallied. So definitely get ready for that. Um, couple folks in group two specifically vying for that juggernaut matchup, which I just learned the name of. And I just think it's so good. So props to Slash GG for being able think of that but ladies and gentlemen let's get into the draft for game number two on battlefield and you know what i'm not gonna write down this draft even though i should i keep forgetting to because i keep getting really excited about talking about these drafts but thinking about the bands from last time we saw a again a really major uh warrior choke Kind of from both teams, the Johanna, the Diablo, um, and so I wonder if we start to see that again. We still have the Johanna being taken out. Last time I was Diablo, Diablo still gets pretty good value on Battlefield of Eternity. 
especially if you can kind of push your opponents back to their end in the map where there are a couple more walls available to get that shadow charge onto. But instead, roll one, switching it up. I'm going to be banning out the Taranda. It's not wanting to deal with the CC that she does offer and the healing output. The Kel'thas being banned out, which is very interesting, because I wouldn't necessarily see Kel'thas as the one to go and ban here on this map specifically. So roll one. I'll, I mean, had a really good showing Zad on the Kel'thas. Hanzo going to be banned out. So a lot of heroes banned that showed up in game number one. Gives me even more questions for what these teams have planned for game number two. There's the Garrosh coming out for team training wheels. Now, what is the follow-up for that Garrosh? We still likely could see the Jaina unless it's picked up right now from roll one. Reiner and Nubarak, really good choices, really play well into each other. We might also see something like a Thrall on the side of Team Training Wheels. Someone to give a little bit more frontline, but also can follow up with their own route. Instead, we're going to get Stukov, who provides that area of effect silencing with that lurking arm. And again, Giggle Schmeck on that Maiev. Now, the lurking arm Warden's Cage combination coming out. Potentially from team training wheels could be pretty catastrophic depending on what other damage we have lined up for team training wheels but I can see that team entirely melting from something like a Jaina which is going to be banned out from roll one here and I'm wondering what we have to go with this Anubarak which might be the focus or a support choke and we're gonna have the Ana or the yes the Ana banned out not the Anna it's the Anna. No grandmas here today. Still potentially see a grandpa though. Decker Kane still on the table. Not really pulled out as often as he used to be ever since the nerfs to those potions came out a few patches ago. But still has pretty good uh, abilities, especially for area of control. And so we see the Malfurion yet again, along with the Li Ming. So I'm wondering what you pair to help set up the Sleeming. You have the Disintegrate and the Anubarak Sun combinations. Artan is coming out for Team Training Wheels, able to provide a lot of the damage onto these Immortals during the objective. And the Phoenix to follow up. So pretty good wave clear. The team fights are going to be interesting and I think really depend on mostly Giggle Schmeck being able to hit those Phantom Knives and really get that damage out. And we see the double front line yet again for roll one. The Arthas Lich King himself coming in here. My problem, and I think I can see where they're going. So my initial problem with the composition on the side of Team Training Wheels is that Garrosh gets the flips. He gets the stun, he gets the flips. But what's the follow up there? You could have the swap from Artanis. You can actually lead in with the swap from Artanis, set up your garage, get the flip. And then you can even have a tether from the Maiev kind of mix in there all around. But again, that kind of screams a lot of single target focus. And I just feel like the damage output, the way it works in the side of Team tra Training Wheels, isn't set up necessarily for that single person focus we'll have to see if they're able to get those in and ladies and gentlemen we're gonna hit the right button for the game this time around over in the blue team training wheels can they make this a draw match we're gonna see reaper on that garage confused on the phoenix taco cat b stepping on the sukov giggle schmack on that mayev and ryukin on the arthas and over in the red, oh, S of Johan. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen? What a callback. 
In the red, we are going to have Roll 1 Esports. Rocker W on the Anubarak. Velvet is going to be on the Rainer. Zad on Li Ming. Wanaba is going to be on the Malfurion. And up in the top lane, we're going to see Big Beard. Again, doing that off lane Arthas run. Well, the talents. Pretty well. There's a flip and it's uh, first coming out from Garrosh. The science immediately available from the Sukov. And ladies and gentlemen, it looks like I was incredibly wrong about the pick potential on the side. Our team training wheels. I totally wasn't factoring in the Sukov silence to follow up with the Garrosh flip, which effectively makes most heroes pretty useless, turns out. Nice is Memento being picked up for Maiev, so those fan and knives, very important to getting that cooldown reset. And it looks like we might be going orb build to help with the objective, being able to help get that immortal down very quickly for the Ming. Checking up here in the top lane, see where you can do the flippy floopy. Big Beard doing some Rudy Frozen Lich King things. That's your update in the off lane, ladies and gentlemen. Raptor W has a great escape tool there with that burrow. We saw a lot of very aggressive burrows going in. Also use for a little bit of retreat if you find yourself in a little bit of a pickle. Well, DPS checking out this bottom camp, just seeing. What they can do is Gigglestromek trying to come around, get the flank onto roll one. No tether caught there. They do get the tether finally onto Rocker W, and there is the flip from Sukov. And Nubarak tries to get the burr out. Rock your W going to fall down here. Now it's time for that camp to be the focus of Team Training Wheels. Pardon, just needed to hydrate. Starting to kick this off. Big Beard just keeping an eye on Artanis starting up here on this camp. Absolutely sees this happening. Wondering if Roll 1 is going to bother Big Beard with the threat, but everyone's showing on the bottom, at least for a little bit. You can should know that they're not necessarily up here yet, but not wanting to take any chances. Roll 1, though, are going to focus on their Bruiser camp. Again, those shamans able to regenerate the forces in that camp. Make it really powerful, really dangerous not to respond to. So that is a very big win for them going into this objective. Stun is out onto Reaper. There's the missiles coming out from Leeming, getting a bit of damage out as well. No significant damage done just yet but there's the flip from reaper and everyone on the team training wheels with the collapse and even the punisher to boot helping to take arthas off of the battleground team training wheels going to now focus on damaging their opponents immortal we see the chunk that artanis is able to provide however this is a really close halftime show coming out from both teams rainer able to chunk this as well not to forget and actually he went exterminator here which means he does even more damage to this immortal there's a top of it from Giggleschmidt. this lurking arm there to follow up velvet avoids getting uh entirely stunned from that garage Giggleschmidt has to back out but not before garage can get one more flip onto the artanis big beard on the retreat artanis going to fall on the other side of this wall however roll one esports Looking like they're going to be the victors here in objective number one. It's the Immortals trade. They get the globes. Half shield, pretty good. Coming out here for a very first objective. Arthas already starting to get that soak up in the top lane. Not trying to miss as much minion damage as possible. Artanis. Again, the big factor. It's not that... There is no damage on this Immortal to defend, but Artanish is kind of the guy on the side of Team Training Wheels to take this out. And so with him not available, it's going to take a little bit longer to clean this up. The shield's finally about to fall here. 
Reaper gets the stun, but the push still continues. Immortal. Going to definitely take out the well. And roll one. Looking like they're going to want to take out this fort as well. This immortal is almost stunned. I'm not sure if they do get this. Lur lurking arm silencing Anubara. And although it's almost down, it doesn't actually fall. Giggleschmeck gets the tether. But it rock your W. Make sure to back up just in time to avoid the pull. Ends up using the burrow to escape. And that is how, ladies and gentlemen, you avoid getting tethered by Maya as Nubarak. Rock your W. Goes in real quick, though. Creeper at low. Low-ish health, but has that additional armor that Garrosh does get. The lower his health goes. Roll one. Able to push off this uh, camp grab from the side of Team Training Wheels for the time being. And we're here just in time? No. Tree beard. With the math skills, barely getting out of that exchange. Arthas, no kills for you today. If it were a Zeratul, might be a little different. But, not today. So this fort's finally gonna fall with the help of this camp. Goal one doesn't really need to do much more if they don't want to. They could go up and try to help get a pick onto this Artanis. Artanis hasn't shown in a bit, but they're not on the bottom. So it should signal that they're on this camp. So depending on if Treebeard can keep Ryukin here long enough, the train is here and it looks like the body blocks are real. There's the stun. Here comes the root from Malfurion. And there is the kill onto RT Anis. Beautifully done here from roll one. What's important about seeing is also important of what you don't see. When you don't see an Artanis down in the bottom lane when you were pushing that hard, and you don't see him anywhere else on the map, and you see a camp up, especially with Big Beard with the scouting, actually being able to reveal that so they actually do know where he is. Really great call to get that pick, especially with how close to level 10 it has now put Roll 1 Esports. And Team Training Rules not even trying so much to depend, defend. I would have liked to see them do a little bit of damage to their own immortal, to or to their opponent's immortal, to try to at least start getting these shields down Roll 1 taking the opportunity to do a little bit of clear while they have the opportunity. Team Training Wheels just trying to wait for that level 10 to hit on their side, though. See Phoenix and Artanis up here trying to get it confused, and Ryukin going to swap out in that offlane spot so that Ryukin is here to help chunk down this immortal. Both teams... Now with level 10 on both sides, posturing, have Purifier Beam coming out from Artanis. I'm sorry, Purification Salvo. I'm pretty sure I saw two different things. Oh wait, no. Just kidding. I'm confusing my Protoss. Ignore me. Purification Salvo, Purifier Beam. We have all the purifications from them Protoss. Warden's Cage as well. In training Wheels now looking to make the approach in. The orb from... Lee Ming doing so much damage we saw onto Reaper. Maev going in, trying to get- they get the tether. There's the pull, but there's the cocoon as well. Hyperion trying to negate roll one from continuing this fight, but they're already in and they're gonna keep going in. The taunt goes out onto Velvet and the purifier being doing so much damage, taking out the Anubarak. The team training wheels already down three members. A Hyperion not- or was just able to do so much work onto the opposing- side of the team and this is going to be yet another immortal with full shield this time around for roll one so long as velvet survives just standing in those punisher stuns not necessarily recommended procs the e get some healing able to save the day big beard though trying to get a little bit of clear maybe bit off a bit more than they can do but the cavalry is here in the form of roll one and they're able Make sure no one falls just yet. Punisher now available. All, well, most hands on deck. Artanis again going down to soak in that bottom lane. I would have liked to see Confused 
and Ryuken again swap for this, but instead it looks like Artanis is going to just full stop head up here to help out. All hands on deck for this defense, while Arthas continues to push down on that bottom lane for Roll 1 Esports. Gate is down. Punisher still doing damage to that gate. Shield about to expire, but we already have keep damage, ladies and gentlemen. Reaper getting stunned onto Zad. Roll one. They have level 13. I want to see them be a little bit more aggressive here, but they are also down a person. And even though they have the talent advantage, they don't have the man advantage. So going to play it safe. Not necessarily pushing hard just yet. Roll one are going to take that advantage though and make sure they can secure this camp. Are this is going to rotate, join them up there. I feel like I've maybe swapped Artanis and Arthas a couple times during this cast. Can't really tell. Team training wheels though, staying grouped together for a little bit. Said making the rotations together, getting that soak a little bit more safer than if they were just to send out that Phoenix or that Artanis down to that bottom lane. They're gonna wanna, they're trying so hard to defend what remains of this keep. A lot of damage from this camp, though, going out onto Reaper. They are able to finish it off. They're about half a level away from 13. They know this camp is being stolen, but they're not going to be able to go in in time. It looks like they were very willing to go in and at least try to defend it, but they're not going to be able to make it. And the name of the game right now for World 1 is again to build up on that macro pressure. Get as many of these camps pushing oop, as possible. Hello down below, map. How are you doing? They get the camp, they get the pressure. Now the question is, team training wheels, do they clear this all out before they go to the immortal spawn? Or are they going to give up a little bit of uh, the lane pressure to their opponents in favor of trying to start doing damage to this immortal and it looks like they're not even going to look for the immortal they're going to look for the fight they are coming in they know that roll one is here gilgishmack on the other side of the wall gets his tether there's the warden's cage the hyperion immediately comes out the lurking arm though combination coming out that is two down on the side of roll one make it a third and treebeard about to be a fourth the flip from Garrosh keeping Arthas in there just long enough the uh, into the fray as well, helping to secure. So saying none of the options, Caster, that you initially suggested on oh, Taco Cat. Taco Cat with those Stukov auto attacks that hit like a brick every five seconds that they hit. Maya going to be on the job of cleaning up camps here. They're going to be able to still hold on to the keep. That bottom camp will continue to push in pretty hard, if not dealt with soon. So team training reels now kind of spread out a little bit. They're going to have to be really careful with defending this. Roll one coming in for the invade. They aren't too far away from half, and not everyone is here. Reaver going to back out. Google Schmidt as well. Response is here. Phoenix regrouping to join in on this fight. Reaver looking for the swap. It misses. Want to see if team training wheels are prepared to go in deep yet again into the territory of their opponents. Some heroics still down. They're waiting on the warden's cage, which I, which I feel like is really the setup for their wombo combo. Stun comes out from the garage. There's the unstoppable proc. There's a tether for Maya, but the damage immediately coming out from roll one. The garage is going to be the one to fall first. Big beard on the other side and is going to fall along with the Rainer. This is turning into a bloodbath on both sides. Three down on the side of Team Training Wheels. In exchange for two for roll one, so a bit of a back and forth, but without the Hyperion available, without the Warden's Cage, not as uh, handily taken by one side or the other. So a bit of bloodshed, but ultimately going to result in yet another Immortal on the side of Roll One Esports, Taco Cat barely being able to keep this keep alive, but one Q from Anubarak will make sure it goes down. And in just a matter of time, we see the big boy 
Coming in the lane. Making his way downtown, walking fast. Faces pass, he's keep bound. Da -da 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 -da. Reaper can't, he can't stun the immortal, but does a little bit of damage. There's a Hyperion to help with the push onto this keep. Roll one, trying to set up. 16 tier for both teams, so not necessarily a talent advantage, but level wise, a little bit more progress for roll one. They get the keep, the immortal, now without a shield, starting to make its way to the core. Do we see roll one commit and try to end the game here, or can team training wheels hold on to this for just a little bit longer? There's the cocoon onto the Maev. Ryukin doing the damage as much as possible onto the immortal. The core is already falling. We're at 40%, ladies and gentlemen. Garrosh is going to go down. The flameless swipe did come out from the Sukhov. The Warden's Cave trying to keep everyone in here together. The core is at 22%. Rocker W, though, able to get in just a little bit of damage with those Anubarak auto attacks and even through the defense. Ladies and gentlemen, Bro 1 Esports pulls out the 2 0 victory here in this matchup saying heck with your stats heck with your with your standings we're gonna come in yeah the person outside my window agrees they're pretty pumped they're yelling about it look at those stats everybody what a game what really good team fights in that last game as well i've got to say from both sides Team Training Wheels coming in with that uh, invade onto the Immortal when all those camps were pushing, I think, was a clear sign that, you know, they didn't necessarily want to let this go, uh, but just not able to turn around, but a lot closer in that game number two than in game number one. So three points going over to Roll One Esports. I'm going to pop into a voice channel. And we're going to wait for a member of Roll One Esports to come in for a short little interview whenever they are composed and ready. Velvet, hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? I am doing great. Um, congratulations on your 2-0 win. Um, Thank you. Rock was actually joking around in uh, one of the channels in, in Slash GG before the match saying... Uh, kind of laughing about how your statistics necessarily won't affect too much uh, going on for the rest of the stage, but you came out 2-0 against someone sitting for a seed. Was that something you were prepared for, or did you just kind of treat this like every other game you've had so far this season? Every other, I mean, we're just a bunch of friends just having fun. Uh, I think we came into this expecting just to play and try, try our best and learn, and we learned some stuff and we had some fun, so... Mm -hmm. Mission accomplished. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, let's talk about game number one for a bit on Infernal Shrines. Um, both of your teams kind of had a similar idea, I feel like, with a lot of uh, chain CC. With one side, you have the double stun coming out from Anubarak, and the roots followed up with Malfurion. On the other side, though, you had the potential for the Stormbolt um, for a couple other things. I forgot to write down the draft, but they had yeah. uh, the Taronda Lunar Flare and things like, like that. Um, so what were your thoughts going into that after the draft, and how did you try to make sure you were hitting all your CC while avoiding the opponents? Um, so we, when we talked about the game after the fact, we just, we commented on the fact that we just focused on landing CCs in a chain instead of landing them all at once, and that was our goal during the game. Even though we didn't really explicitly say it, it seemed like everyone was focused on just doing that. So we, we were heads up, we'd watch a root hit, and then we'd wait, and sometimes we'd overlap, but we had four characters, with, five characters with CC, so mm -hmm. it, it worked out. Uh, turns out. Yeah, it, it turns out if, you, if everyone has a CC and you land one, it's going to work. Yeah. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, yeah, no problem. That's how, that's how it works. Um, yeah, we, we talked, or at least a couple of our guys talked at length about draft and had a plan going in. Um, and we mostly got what we wanted, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the very first objective on that map, I was trying not to get to the point of screaming when the skeletal defenders hit 39 and 39 <laughs> yeah. on both sides. Yeah. 
and Kale Thought ends up suiciding to get that last one, I'm pretty sure, on that. Oh, what that were your comms a... like in that moment? Because it was really tense for me, and I saw a couple people in chat popping off, too. The the one where we got, we stole it? The, the, I was mm -hmm. trying two or three. I can't remember if that was two or three. Um, comms, actually, if I remember, they felt pretty calm. Um, it, you know, as within reason in Heroes, we didn't... We didn't scream at him, go get the thing. We were just like, hey, you could probably poke. And he's like, yeah, okay. And then he said, Winnieba, come come help me do this. Mm -hmm. um, and we figured he was going to sacrifice himself for it. So it was, <laughs> it wasn't really, it wasn't really like an insane thing. It was more like, you could do it. You you could do it. You it was, got this. It's no <laughs> it big deal. fine. Yeah, this is yeah. totally fine. I, that was that was kind of the mood of both games through most of both games. Like the they got a really amazing flank on us in the, in that BOE game. Mm -hmm. And uh, even after the they five man team wiped us, we kind of went. That's okay. We're, we're fine. <sighs> we got this. Do you so. find it hard to keep that mentality? The this is fine. This is like we got this. Even when like um, you know like you mentioned things go wrong like that, or has it taken a bit for you all to get to that point? I think I think I am one of the guys who has more of a problem keeping that in my head. I don't. I try to stay focused, but I tend to to like get flustered or frustrated more. Rock tends to be the literally the rock for the team. He tends to say something along the lines of. It's okay, guys. We're still in this. We got this. <laughs> or, well, that didn't go well, but we were okay, kind of thing. And he'll try to recenter us usually um, in comms. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it it's kind of like a, different players are bringing different things for the voice comms, and we we've spent most of our season figuring that out. Uh, and it's kind of worked. Finally, starting to click together in the last couple weeks or so, we've started to find more of a rhythm of that. So. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, we. We did a big roll swap at the beginning of this season, like mm. pretty massive roll swaps, and that led to a lot of confusion and voice comms, whose job is what, and yeah, so mm -hmm. it worked out now, though. Yeah, yeah, it usually takes a couple weeks for those things to gel, and it's good that it's coming, you know, maybe a little later than, than never per se, but that kind of leads us into the upcoming stage two bracket phase, which mm -hmm. um, I finally was reading into today. I was kind of avoiding it for now just because I was focused on, on stage one. But now that you've gotten to face off against, I think mostly everyone, you have one more game tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. There's yes. An ambulance yeah, we... outside my apartment, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, we, we play, yeah, we play tomorrow against, uh, what's the team? I have it somewhere. Is it Thick Mama Hearts? I have a schedule right here. Uh, it is Thick, thick Mama. Yeah. Thick Mama Alex Hearts. Um, yeah, so you have that going on tomorrow, which should be exciting. And then, yeah, going back into the bracket stages, regardless of what placements actually are, um, is there one team in particular that maybe you're hoping not to face off initially in the bracket or is there a team specifically that you feel like you have a good chance against to move on through the bracket if you face them first uh, i wouldn't mind playing the guys we just played again first that was fun it was a good game we know mm -hmm. giggle schmack we, we some of us met giggle at blizzcon i was um, i saw all that and i was like this is so wholesome and adorable and i love that this is happening <laughs> right before I, this game I, I like playing players that i've met in person so mm -hmm. that's pretty cool um Honestly, I'm probably the worst person to ask this. I, I've really, I in the past, I've gone really hard on like stats and like trying to figure out who our opponents are and stuff. But this season, I'm just having fun playing. Mm -hmm. So I don't even, I haven't even looked at our points, how many points we, I don't even know where we are. So <laughs> I'm a, I am probably the least good person to be interviewing for that question. No, <laughs> it's Everyone. always great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just I, close yeah. your eyes and you, and you point, right? You do like the pin the tail on the donkey method of like, eh, I guess we'll face those yeah, people. I, I'm just having a lot of fun this season. It's a good season, so. Well, I'm glad to hear that, and uh, I'm glad to see you guys having success kind of later on this, in this season. So congratulations again, and before Thank I you. let you go, Velvet, um, I will give the floor to you for any shout-outs you have. Oh, okay. Um, Shout-out to uh, our benched players who sometimes ch step in, uh, Poe, and uh, even though I don't think he's played in this season yet, Bray Bray's sometimes around to play. Um, and all of the rest of our guys who sometimes who aren't in our team roster officially, but they've been on our roster many times in the past. Uh, Mango, uh, Kendo, 
bunch of guys that we play with. And anybody else from the Foggy League from in the past? Uh, and to oh, sorry, to our sponsor Osmo. Even though I'm not sure if you're still our sponsor. Uh, <laughs> big shout out to Osmo. Thanks, Osmo. I also definitely accidentally called you guys Roll20 a couple times, so apologize on that, uh, but I just see the roll and the 20 comes out. I... That's <laughs> our, that was our ultimate plan, was to be imposters. <laughs> just put on Roll20 mustaches and, you know, rob the bank. That Wait, is... did they have mustaches? <laughs> I mean, you can I have a mustache. I remember wrong with them. Glow wrong with a mustache. I don't know funny. about. I feel like some of them grew out facial hair at one point, but maybe not. I don't know. But you can do whatever you're, you feel like doing. You know, so bring it. But yeah. <laughs> well, good luck uh, in your match tomorrow. Good luck in the bracket stages, and I look forward to seeing how you guys do. And congratulations Thank again. So Thanks for the cast. It was great. Oh, of course, anytime. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been my game. But before we go, I need to shout out a couple folks. So number one, Pally with that host. Thank you so much, everybody coming over. I saw you actually, uh, I was sweeping your channel and I saw your casting NGS. I was hoping to host over to you, but it looks like you wrapped up a game too. So not going to happen, <laughs> but we are going to host over, over another game. So if you're looking for that competitive hot action, we will still have some coming up. Um, also to Zad, to Plur Ninja, and to Lord Shadow Leaves. Uh, thank you all for following, and I hope to catch you uh, in a cast or uh, during a stream soon. So welcome. Um, as for me, my name is Cat Peach. You can find me at Cat Peach GG on Twitch and or Twitter. Uh, I stream Haunts. I stream Sea of Thieves. I stream Apex Legends and sometimes uh, very strange games that I find on Steam that are $5. So if that is your jam, make sure to follow this channel. Um, you can get a really cute hedgehog emote. I'm going to pop that in chat real fast. Uh, you can get your own hog champ if you want to want to. Um, but we are going to host over... It looks like... It looks like... Mongoose is currently doing a point of view stream for their competitive match. So let's actually throw it over to Sir Mongoose, who is currently in the process of competing. So you can see the voice comp side of things. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for hanging out. Velvet, <laughs> Velvet, thank you for the follow as well. Um, I will be back with more slash GG action at some point. Um, and I hope to see you there. So thanks for hanging out tonight. Really appreciate everyone being here and have a great week.